Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Vegetarian by Han Kang. So this was the Man International, the Man Booker International Prize winner of 2016. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. Oh, oh, there is a very short one, I guess. Um, then I'm going to check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Dane reads... Young Hai and her husband are ordinary people. He is an office worker with moderate ambitions and mild manners. She is an uninspired but dutiful wife. The acceptable flatline of their marriage is interrupted when Yong Hai, seeking a more plant-like existence, commits a shocking act of subversion. As her rebellion manifests in ever more bizarre and frightening forms, Yong Hai spirals further and further into her fantasies of abandoning her fleshly prison and becoming, impossibly, ecstatically, a tree. Which is why I'm vegan. Um, and also, maybe don't read this book if you're a vegan. I mean, it's hard to tell exactly what point the author is trying to make uh, about vegetarianism and veganism, but it doesn't come off particularly positive. It's kind of associated with mental illness. It's like, oh, you don't eat meat? Well, you must be mad. Um, apart from the main character, who is the one who goes mad, who is the only character in this that I actually liked. So, so here we have a great example of how the... So this is narrated by a few different characters, and the first one it's narrated by, uh, the vegetarian's husband, uh, is a dick. And so here is, a, here is a great example of that. While I idled the afternoon away, TV remote in hand, she would shut herself up in her room. More than likely she would spend the time reading, which was practically her only hobby. For some unfathomable reason, reading was something she was able to really immerse herself in. Reading books that looked so dull I couldn't even bring myself to so much as take a look inside the covers. Only at mealtimes would she open the door and silently emerge to prepare the food. To be sure, that kind of wife and that kind of lifestyle did mean that I was unlikely to find my days particularly stimulating. On the other hand, if I'd had one of those wives whose phones ring on and off all day long with calls from friends or co-workers, or whose nagging periodically leads to screaming rows with her husbands, I would have been grateful when she finally wore herself out. And um, she's thrown the eggs and the milk out as well, which to me suggests she's not a vegetarian, she's a vegan. And here we have his, his thoughts on that. I was lost for words, though at the same time I was aware that choosing a vegetarian diet wasn't quite so rare as it had been in the past. People turn vegetarian for all sorts of reasons, to try and alter their genetic predisposition towards certain allergies, for example, or else because it's seen as more environmentally friendly not to eat meat. I mean, it's not seen to be, it is documented that it's scientifically more environmentally friendly to not eat meat. Of course, Buddhist priests who have taken certain vows are morally obliged not to participate in the destruction of life, but surely not even impressionable young girls take it quite that far. As far as I was concerned, the only reasonable grounds for altering one's eating habits were the desire to lose weight, an attempt to alleviate certain and physical ailments, being possessed by an evil spirit, or having your sleep disturbed by indigestion. In any other case, it was nothing but sheer obstinacy for a wife to go against her husband's wishes as mine had done. He didn't mention the fact that most people who turn vegetarian do it because they don't want to participate in an industry that's rife with animal cruelty. And she doesn't want to have sex with him, and he goes, you didn't used to be like this after all. Actually, what? It's the smell. The smell? The meat smell. Your body smells of meat. This was too, this was just too ridiculous for words. Didn't you just see me take a shower? So where's the smell coming from, huh? From the same place your sweat comes from, she answered, completely in earnest. It is true, people who eat meat smell like meat to me, or like rotting meat, it's even worse. It's not a, it's not nice. All right, then we get this quite frankly harrowing scene where this dude, the main character, the guy who's narrating it, rapes his wife. So he says, um, trigger warning, obviously. I'm just gonna read this paragraph. I sometimes told myself that even though the woman I was living with was a little odd, nothing particularly bad would come of it. I thought I could get by perfectly well just thinking of her as a stranger, or no, as a sister, or even a maid, someone who puts food on the table and keeps the house in good order. But it was no easy thing for a man in the prime of his life, for whom married life had always gone entirely without a hitch, to have his physical needs go unsatisfied for such a long period of time. So yes, one night when I returned home late and somewhat inebriated after a meal with colleagues, I grabbed hold of my wife and pushed her to the floor. Pinning down her struggling arms and tugging off her trousers, I became unexpectedly aroused. She put up a surprisingly strong resistance and, spitting out vulgar curses all the while, it took me three attempts before I managed to insert myself successfully. Once that had happened, she lay there in the dark, staring up at the ceiling, her face blank as though she were a comfort woman dragged in against her will, and I was the Japanese soldier demanding her services. As soon as I finished, she rolled over and buried her face in the quilt. I went to have a shower, and by the time I returned to bed, she was lying there with her eyes closed as if nothing had happened, or as though everything had somehow sorted itself out during the time I'd spent washing myself. Like I said, this guy's a grade A knobhead. And then we do start to see the story being told by another character, um, but he is also a bit of a knobhead. He's 
um, the vegetarian's brother-in-law and he basically wants to, he fantasizes about her and wants to film her having sex and stuff. And he asks her, he says, why is it you don't eat meat? I've always wondered, but somehow I couldn't ask. She lowered her chopsticks and looked across at him. You don't have to tell me if it's difficult for you, he said, fighting all the time to suppress the sexual images that were running through his head. No, she said calmly, it isn't difficult, it's just that I don't think you'd understand. She raised her chopsticks again and slowly chewed some seasoned bean sprouts. It's because of a dream I had. A dream, he repeated. I had a dream, and that's why I don't eat meat. Well, what kind of dream? I dreamed of a face. A face? Seeing how utterly baffled he was, she laughed quietly, a melancholic laugh. Didn't I say you wouldn't understand? He couldn't ask in that case why did you used to bear your breast to the sunlight like some kind of mutant animal that had evolved to be able to photosynthesize. Was that because of a dream too? And then later on we see as well from the sister-in-law's eyes, but I don't have too much more I want to share to be honest. It's a fairly short book. My main thing with it is I don't... I feel like it's trying to say something, but I don't think it really communicated what it was trying to say. Um, a lot of the characters really hate vegetarianism and veganism for apparently no reason. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. Some of the writing in places as well is like oversimplified and I don't know whether that's just the way that it was written originally. I don't know whether it's done for dramatic effect. I don't know if it's because of the way it was translated because it was translated from Korean into English by Deborah Smith. Um, but yeah, it was okay. I don't really understand the hype. To me it re read very much like um, like an indie author's first book, basically. It was, as I say, it was okay. Um, three out of five for me, that's all I can give it. Um, but, you know, some people seem to really love this book. I just thought it was okay. It wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. Um, the people in it were terrible, but that was, I assume, anyway, that was deliberate. Um, but yeah, it was alright. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Vegetarian by Han Kang. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.